we have a clinic in Canada, so we have an interest in psychedelic assisted psychotherapies. Um, so I'm here today to talk about a drug formulation work with LSD, which is very exciting. And we're creating a microdosing regimen of uh, using LSD, it's our first candidate drug, and we're creating a microdose in a form that can be effectively prescribed consistently and stored with long shelf life like any other drug and taken safely in microdoses by patients. And we're running a unique clinic, clinical trial. It's a world first phase one clinical trial in 80 patients who are prescribed the drug by doctor and take it home as they would with any other medication. Um, so we have the government approvals and funding to import LSD manipulate it in the lab, administer it to patients. We do it first in the lab, and then we have the approval for a doctor to prescribe it in two week doses at a time as part of our clinical trial protocols. This is a very large phase one safety study, microdosing LSD in 80 healthies. And in, in this phase one trial, it's already been running for almost 12 months and it's due for completion shortly. So I can't say much really about our formulation work, unfortunately, because um, about our LSD formulation work because of our IP protection, but I'd like to share some things that we've learned about microdosing LSD in the clinical trial environment. I hope you find it interesting. And some of it's fascinating and unexpected, um, to be frank with you. So um, microdosing really is a convenient uh, way to administer a sub-perceptual dose of this drug, where patients can take the drug and then get on with their day in the same way that they would if they were taking an antidepressant medication. And we know that a sub-perceptual dose uh, now, we, we definitely know this, is different for each for different people based on a whole series of biometric and psychometric factors and so we're using tens of thousands of data points from our clinical trial biometric and psychometric data that we're collecting as well as the qualitative experiences which are recorded and document in an extraordinary amount of detail and and we sought using artificial intelligence so to build a micro dosing algorithm uh, and some adjacent technologies to come up with a pre predictive treatment regimen where we can predict the ideal microdose and the expected outcomes. And that's really sort of exciting work. Um, something that's fascinating our scientists at the moment is that we have discovered a microdose taken in the lab is experienced very differently than when patients take a microdose at home. So this is a real world environment. And interestingly, in the lab, patients feel generally, generally nothing at all or slightly affected by uh, the microdose of LSD. Now, overwhelmingly though, at home, people are noticing the effects of LSD um, in microdoses as opposed to when sitting idle in a chair in the lab. So it's when people are getting on with the day, they're noticing the effects in their day-to-day -day activities of the LSD microdose. Um, so our ability to assess the effects of taking LSD in the real world uh, with these unique clinical trials, where we're prescribing the drug and they're taking it out in the community, it's incredibly powerful uh, in our analytic efforts to, to get a microdose and a treatment protocol that's tolerable and effective. So it's the nuances of these experiences we're observing and the data we're collecting that will enable us to curate some, an ideal therapeutic experience for patients.